Hello guys, and welcome to Air Tycoon Online 3, episode 31, and today I'm feeling like a victor. I am feeling like a genius, because if you guys have tracked my last two episodes, and I don't blame you if you haven't, because they've been exhausting and difficult for me to make, but I guess that's not a reason why I shouldn't watch them, but I have been struggling to get recording working in my new world, because this world is being recorded on an iPhone. Now, I tried all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of different screen recorders, all sorts of different ways to try and freaking make the audio freaking record at the same time as the video, and I just couldn't make it work. So, I did the noble thing and I just gave up. But, luckily, I found a really, really interesting new solution. So, what I'm doing now is I'm actually recording my Android phone screen and because I'm playing on an Apple device I'm mirroring the screen using another third-party mirroring app to mirror my iPhone screen onto my Android screen and then recording my Android screen because that actually works so that is the convoluted mess I'm going through to try and make a freaking screen recording today what am I doing but anyways now that that's out of the way I can finally get on my lit and talk about the game and I'm as if I've done that for the past two episodes of Air Tycoon Online. Might as well be, uh, I know, like, bored teen rambles about, I don't know, operating systems, I don't know. But anyways, we can finally get on and play this game. So, there's actually a lot of I want to talk about about this particular Air Tycoon Online world, such as the fact that I'm using competition routes, you know, like, just uncharacteristic of me, um, just for fun, to see how they're doing. But... I don't know, I'm so tired at this point, I'm just, you know, gonna try and get some of these routes made, um, yeah, just gonna, you know, try and use some of these aircraft before I literally fall asleep, I wanted to finish doing what I'm doing now, like, I probably wanted to finish, like, hours ago, like, I wanted to be done recording, <laughs> like, more than an hour ago, but I ran into so many annoying uh, technicalities that, um, here I am, I, I'm still recording, freaking hours later, it's like 2.30 a.m., and I've been trying to sleep earlier, so, yeah, I'm gonna need that, <laughs> but, anyways, at least I'm finally managing to get a decent recording, hopefully you guys can hear me, because I realize I'm not sitting too close to my Android phone, I'll move my Android phone closer to where I'm talking, so, Hopefully the audio quality won't be too diminished, and hopefully, hopefully I'm not screwing up too many things. Because if this recording screws up, let's make sure we're recording here. Yeah, because if this recording screws up, I'm going to be furious because I've been trying to make something work for so long. On a side note, though, I'm starting to run out of routes. I want to make 747s to London. Um gonna have to start decreasing in quality very quickly um i've already started doing cities like nanjing so i guess we could do kathmandu hmm we can do not sien's not very good i always think it is but it's not uh Qingmei, Qingming, chihuahua louisville that's a good one can't believe i missed that until now uh let's quickly make that seven or seven it's so cool to watch my <laughs> android phone screen changing as i'm doing this um but yeah, unfortunately, this is the first episode I have working, and yet I've ran out of interesting things to talk about. It always seems to be the episodes I make where they get corrupted in some way, shape, or manner, that, and I really am enjoying the commentary I'm making, are the ones that get corrupted. For example, in the episode I had to do a voiceover in, what I did is I took a look at the number one player, and I looked, spent some credits, looked at his routes, and found that he likes to make a lot of direct routes. So, what did I think of that? I was thinking, like, well, he's obviously profiting from all these direct routes, but how so? Um, then I looked at his name value, and I saw that he had 70 name value in his hub, in his hubs. So, if he has 70 name value in his hubs, that means he's investing heavily into his hubs. But if you do that, it should be pretty expensive, right? Well, not necessarily, because he only has two hubs, New York and Chicago. Uh, so in total, investing a maximum amount in both of those cities 
still only costs him 80, 85k, 88k, 90k-ish per turn. And that name value seems to be bringing extra passengers to his monopolies, because routes which I traditionally don't think would be full, uh, like New York to uh, something small, or maybe these routes just are full, and I'm ignorant because I never had a New York this big. Um, but let me see if I can find one. Yeah, he's running like all these kind of routes and not a single, I kid you not, not a single one. Like this is definitely his route, for example. Not a single one of these routes, um, no matter how bad looking, are not full. Like they're not full with 1.3 pricing or higher. So that makes me think London is even bigger than New York. So I can probably do, is it? Wait. New York is bigger than London in this world by a lot. That's insane. Um, that's insane. Too bad. I want a part of New York now. Uh, but anyways, basically, I'm able to make stopovers uh, to accomplish the same thing using smaller cities um, for now. And then I can upgrade them later once my name value gets higher. Um, so basically, I think, I'm not sure if I've learned this for sure, but I believe name value does have a large effect on monopolies and the occupancy of them. So I'm going to be very interested to see how increasing my name value will let me charge either higher prices or attract higher occupancy. My occupancy is already mostly 100 though. So I don't see too much improvement in that department, but any improvement at all is better than none, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Another thing we've got to do is we've got to make a bunch of new stopover routes, which is getting more and more difficult as we run low on cities. So let's take a look at some of the routes we can make to London. Um, yeah, these are the kind of cities uh, which I feel most of, mostly are left. I feel like there's a good one here. Daman, yes. Let's take Daman. Oh, we have three slot requests. So we gotta wait that out. Do we have any untaken cities around this neighborhood? Um, no, I should have been doing slot requests while figuring out all my technical mumbo jumbo. Ooh. Let's do one. Let's do a single stop. And let's go to Augusta. And of course, I selected the wrong airport. Uh, there we go. Now we should be able to make this route. Yes, very nice. And 1.3 pricing. That's another thing I observed from the number one player is his pricing is consistently 1.3. I don't know why, but I can kind of agree with it because I find that I've so far in this server found that 1.3 pricing works very well too. I've also found that there's a very non-linear nature between pricing in Air Tycoon and occupancy. So... Um, and, and the size of cities, of course. So, for example, I found that a route with a pretty big size difference, like the difference between Springfield and Memphis, for example, Springfield's about half the size, yet London to Memphis won't make more than London to Springfield if I overprice London to Springfield just a little bit, which I find really awkward. Um, it's something I'm not used to. Uh, for example, I had one route, Dubai to Beijing, and as you can see, it's consistently struggling. And this was doing even worse before I lowered the price by just, you know, one or 2% in all the classes. They were doing even worse. And I just decreased the price by 1% and the occupancy went up 1K on a downtick. Um, so like, yeah, like there's something weird going on with, uh, with routes and pricing in Air Tycoon Online 3, which I don't quite understand yet. Um, I should play around with it more, but I kind of need an offline Air Tycoon to play with, around with pricing uh, and finding out how pricing affects occupancy more, um, just so I can pass turns for free, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this game needs an offline version to help those of us who are trying to figure that kind of stuff out. Um, anyways, five minutes slot requests, or I think we're at five. Yeah, five minute slot requests are starting to feel pretty brutal to record with, with only three slot requests and one plane request. So I think I need to fix that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to go 
uh, set up my Apple ID with a credit card number or something like that so I can actually spend credits. I'll probably buy $10 worth because that's fun. Um, that'll give me a fun amount to use throughout the game. Um, you know, like, I don't care if only uh, like I'm getting a low enough viewership so that you know most people don't really care about like what I'm doing and that kind of stuff. And if you do, I highly appreciate um, your time to come and watch. You know what I mean? But like, I know not a lot of people watch, so it's not like I'm investing ten dollars or anything like that. It's just spending ten dollars on a game I enjoy. So that's pretty nice. I'm recording a lot of Air Tycoon recently. I don't know why. I've just been enjoying uh, playing Air Tycoon Online Three. Not sure why, but I am. So uh, let's see if we can find a route around here. Port au Prince, Kingston, San Juan. Come on. Uh, Cape Coral. Cape Coral is actually pretty good. Jesus. I've never been to Cape Coral. I lived in Florida for three months. Um, at one point in my life. I lived in Tallahassee. Um, I must say that this tiny unknown city had some incredibly nice people in it. A, B, it, I was also at that time. How old was I? I was... I think I was in grade two. I can't remember. No, it was, in, it was either in grade one or three. One or the other. I can't remember. Probably three. But probably two. I don't know. But yeah, you get the you get the gist. I was pretty small. And I went there. And it was just such a blast. You know, I didn't have any electronics there. Which probably contributed to how much fun I was having. You know, just spending time with my sister and my grandma. Uh, my grandma was... My grandma and my dad were my caretakers there. My mom had to stay in Vancouver for her work, which is where I live normally. And my dad had a sabbatical to Tallahassee, so we were living there. And we were going to school there and all that kind of stuff for three months. And I must say, like, first of all, I enjoyed American cafeteria. American cafeteria food is all, probably close to the worst in the world, yet it is better by a large margin when compared to Canadian cafeteria food. At least Canadian cafeterias I've managed to be go like go to. Uh, another thing notable is when I went there. Okay, and I'm not trying to sound racist, but everyone was black. But oddly enough, as a kid, I didn't think anything of it. Like I'm an Asian dude, and I was literally the only Asian dude in the whole school. And I think there was three white kids who went into the school with about three or four hundred people and I never thought a single thing about it which I find very interesting because it really shows like being raised by a in a pretty like good way I'd say um I had literally no conception of like judging people by people's race I had I, I went into that place with absolutely no like presuppositions about what I should think about these people. I thought they, they were just people. But, you know, after going to high school and after being exposed to, I don't know, I guess the idea of racism, I feel like that literally converted me to being racist, which is pretty interest, interesting because, like, the point of us being educated about, you know, in, in like, our Canadian school system about you know, like, past, like, events around racism and stuff like that is to probably get you to try and not be racist, yet it had the exact opposite effect for me. I feel like I was a pretty pure person before. I honestly, like, I thought of, like, everybody as just other people, but now... After high school, I think of that's a black person. That's not a person. That's a black person. You know what I mean? Like, and like that's not an inherently racist thought. That's just, like, a fact. That's the truth. But it's interesting that I think like that now instead of the way I thunk before. Um, I don't know where in my life that changed where all of a sudden I'm judging people by their race whenever I see 
like somebody I judge their appearance I judge their everything and I never did that before and I really miss that about my life and how did I get out of this topic just Tallahassee eh? Jesus Christ I enjoyed Tallahassee so much um it's odd because you wouldn't think a small town in Florida was any good place to be let alone um you know one that was not very rich um especially compared to Vancouver, which probably has, you know, some of the highest standards of living um, compared to most places anywhere. Like, you can't really beat Vancouver by much. <laughs> Yet, when you're a kid and you're so, I guess, innocent and pure, you just don't think about any of those things. They're not a concern to you. Um, you just enjoy your life. You, well, I enjoyed the warm weather and... Uh, I was a very explorative kid, all right? So me and my sister would have an incredibly amount, like high amount of fun, just inventing little games to play. A lot of other people needed toys or they needed their parents to play with them wherever they were, but me and my sister, we managed to invent games. We made up stories on the spot. My sister used to do something called a fake reading to me. She's two years older than me. And what she would do is she would pick up a book and just make up a story, and I don't know how she did it, and I still don't know how she did it, but she made some very compelling stories, and we either role play as characters um, from these stories we, we she was making up, and we continue the plot uh, using you know our stuffed animals for some of the characters, or role playing them as ourselves, and it was just so so much fun, like I remember distinctly whenever we would meet other children basically um we would show them the kind of games we would play and they would have the literal best times of their lives because they just didn't seem to have the same level of creativity as me and my sister and i don't want to say that in a way that you know invalidates other people's childhoods but i really did think me and my sister were more creative than normal kids maybe just through the way we were raised um which is really awesome now most of that's gone now like I'm probably one of the least creative people I know now. I don't know. I'm still, like, good. Like, for example, I really like to play Minecraft. I don't know if you guys know that, but I really, really do. And I'm, I would say, a very, very, very competent Minecraft builder in terms of making things look aesthetically pleasing. But it's usually just the one style. Like, I don't think of very unique things to build. I just build them to look good. You know what I mean? Like, I've lost some of that creativity where I just don't care about the result. And I'm just trying to um, make everything for fun. And I miss that. Like, like in my Air Tycoon Online world, I'm playing my main I'm not playing in my main world because I can't win. Um, not because I can't have fun. Well, i having less fun than I would like to, actually. But, like... You guys get the point. Um, things are very different from when I was a kid, and I miss it. And all that was triggered by me looking at a the name Tallahassee on a screen. I really hope this episode doesn't get corrupted now. I really like it when I manage to talk about some more interesting or more deep things in my videos because there's usually just me repeating stuff about routes, which, you know, most p people who watch my episodes a bit probably pretty repetitive because it's just the same routes over and over and over again but yeah um i'm now out of things to talk about i can't i can't beat that last topic you know how do you beat that how do you top that but anyways i, I think everything else is going to take too long to finish and i'm getting a little bit bored and really tired mainly but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this episode um i certainly did and i'll see you guys next time